Okay, Jason. Yep. I'll call the order. I was found in touch. by Velma, seconded by Dan. All those in favor? Approved. Moving on, public forum. Anything from the public that's not on the agenda? Seeing none. Approval of the minutes, August 26. Seconded by Phil. All those in favor? Uh, in September 4th minutes. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Accept as written. Uh, motion by Dan. Second. Seconded by Tom. All those in favor? And I'll abstain. Uh, any committee board reports? Nothing? Disappointing to me, Dan? No meetings. Mm -hmm. One tonight. <laughs> uh, Mr. Manager. Yes, uh, we would ask to uh, to meet our new deputy uh, sheriff. So tonight, uh, Sheriff King is here with uh, uh, Martin Harmon, our new uh, our new uh, deputy. So we can put a name to a face. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, ask him any questions that you have. I guess. How much do you bet? <laughs> right now, three thirty-five. <laughs> Better at deadlifting. Well, we'll make sure we're not dead. <laughs> I like that. It's a good plan. Yeah. Are you a blue pen? Second, sir. Are you a blue pen? Yes, sir. Yep. Well, welcome aboard. Guys. Thanks for coming. Tonight. Thank you, Jeff. I see you got us a packet tonight too, as well. I I, I do, and, yeah. and if I could just if I could just like take two well, minutes. Definitely and, yours. Yeah, you know, uh, Marty Harmon actually he was pre previously he was a dispatcher, and just a lot of people don't know that, but uh, he um, I actually recognized him because of his uh, uh, some outstanding work. I think we had a, what was it, a missing child or something yes, that sir. he was able to triangulate. Don't ask me what he did. But he did some type of triangulation to direct our deputies into the woods where they actually saved that little boy, which I thought was really good. And he was working for Sanford Regional Dispatch Center, so I recognized him. He came in, so I knew the name. And then he became a blue fin, started working in Elliott. Then when we had an opening, I absolutely grabbed him. So, uh, And just FYI, he, I just had a recognition ceremony uh, last week. Um, yeah, last week. And... Um, I recognized him because he, he made an arrest on a rape charge that happened in, a, in um, at Bentley's. And I didn't publicize the name of the uh, campground, but they did make the newspaper. But I think that's the value of having a contract deputy, is he got the call, he went over there, and then he was able to dedicate his time to do the investigation. We called in, he called in a, a, an investigator, and together they made the arrest. It was that night, wasn't it? Yes, it was, sir. All the other deputies were tied up, so if you didn't have a contract deputy, that would have sat in the bucket for a while. Yeah, I mean, it just wouldn't have happened, and, and I really, I mean, it, it, you know, a couple of people made a yes, how much, and he, um, he benches. I mean, the, the place was full, everybody was drunk, as we know what happens over there, but he hung in there, and he, and he was able to, you know, again, he had to quell the, the crowds for us, he was able to make the arrest. He's already got two office for demo work from the construction guys here in the uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's seriously, uh, thank you. And I want to thank you, you folks. I mean, kind of Rundle for having a, you know, the contract deputy program. It really, really helps us out to, uh, you know, to give, uh, uh, to take care of these calls for service. And again, I mean, I think that the quality of life and 
the, uh, the things that we bring to the town of Arundel, I think it's a compliment to the board for, uh, for having two contract deputies. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for showing up to Absolutely. it. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank yep. you. So, so Chief, uh, yes, sir. This, this report, is this something that you do every year? It looks like it's something that you uh, I, send to the com your county commissioners? Yeah, typically, sir, I do that every, I used to do it every quarter, and now, I, now I'm doing it semi-annual. But um, I will make sure that I get adequate copies to, to Rundle if uh, I'm, I, I'm pleased that you folks are reading it. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, I, I like to write that just and it kind of talks about a little bit about the overall activity. Now, Dee will be able to give it to somebody from York so they can see what we do up here right now yeah. at the uh, York County Sheriff's Office. Well, you know, I'm thinking every year we kind of ask you to have something prepared for us for when we have our town meeting. Um, and maybe this might be something, you know, I know yeah. that you don't have at least this done, this one done by right. that time, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I, and, and I, you know, if I missed it, I may have missed it this past time, but typically uh, Mrs. Simone does give me that notice, and I write something up, and we try to include a lot of the statistics. Okay. But, um, yeah, I definitely will do that. And I'll make sure that you folks are on. I send adequate copies for everybody to have one next time we uh, do one of these. And I'll make sure I invite you to the annual awards uh, ceremony that we're going to have. It'll probably be, it's not, uh, the date isn't solidified yet, but it's usually in January or early February. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Again, welcome aboard. Um, thank you. Uh, since I haven't spoken with anyone yet, were there any comments, concerns, or questions that you know that the public's had in the last few weeks or months that you'd like to pass along? I, I usually work during the dark, so I don't get to speak with a lot of people unless I meet them at one of the gas stations or a restaurant. Did we, we had an issue with the, uh, did you talk to anybody about the old post road and the... Oh, that intersection? Yeah. No, I haven't spoken to them yet. I'm just going to have our discussion and then okay. maybe follow up. Yeah. We have some people at the four-way intersection on old post road and river road that have been sort of... Burning tires. Yeah, yeah being yes, a little aggressive going through without stopping. We were hoping maybe we that's the, that's been noted. That's a both Woodcock and I are paying attention. Okay, area, sir. good. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> I, I personally called in uh, across the street in the old post, the old fire station, one night. <coughs> there was quite a bit of aggressive say, yes. uh, and they I think they cleared it up because I haven't heard it since <laughs> as badly. So, uh, so thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the invite, folks. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, I received a letter from the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution requesting that I sign a constitution we fought for nation that they provided to me, and I provided in your package as well. And because they've asked me to do it, and I am affects the town of Arundel. I wasn't going to sign unless I got the uh, okay from you folks to sign it on behalf of the town. I see that if there's nothing in it for the town, is that why would you want to get involved with that cruel one? There's nothing in it for us. <laughs> Have we done this before? Uh, I'm not sure. Have we done it since I've been here? I don't know. It sounded something. Come up before. Maybe I've seen it something. Mm -hmm. Come up before. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. What's your pleasure? Where's the belt? It's going to hurt. Hearing no objection. Are you okay with it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I pass it by you before I sign it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I have before we get to general business was. Um, we received a liquor license that we'll be putting on your next agenda from uh, the new restaurant Vandaloop that's going to go on the corner of uh, Route 1 and Limick Road. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and because it's new, um, there's a citation in here about the hearings, whether or not, um, it doesn't say you shall, it says you may hold a public hearing on this, and I'm wondering because it's new whether or not you want to coordinate a public hearing along with a review of this at your next business meeting. It, it, it makes no difference to me. I mean, Vandaloop has been, ar been around, but they haven't been here in Arundel, so I'm not sure if you want to hold a public hearing prior <coughs> to the meeting. Any pleasure? Um, what do we do? 
What's that? On how to move it new. It doesn't do any harm. It's just it's more procedural stuff that I, I got to make sure I get things in the paper yeah. and certain dates and that, all that kind of stuff. So, and generally, I have not, we haven't done it with the ones that we've had on a continuous basis. But they've been here for so long and they drew out their paperwork. So this is new. So I'll go ahead and, and coordinate a public hearing prior to our business meeting before your approval. Okay. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Uh, moving on to general business. So we've got to open some bids. Yeah, you have the uh, you have the general construction bids to your right. Yeah. Looks like we might have got what? Five or six of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, right. First one would be pool and construction. Uh, so today being September 9th, 7 p.m., uh, declares he's carefully examined the scope of work, specification of drawings, agrees whose proposal is to set that he will enter into a contract with the town of Arundel. So the base bid for pooling is $2,624,920. understands the uh, scope of work, specifications, drawings. So Martini is 2,834,000 even. Two million five hundred and eighty nine thousand. Two million five hundred sixty four thousand forty dollars. Ducas. Six thousand one hundred sixty three. Uh, finally, Dotons. I hope I pronounced that right. Dotons. 
D-O-T-E-N. Came in at two million nine hundred ninety six thousand four hundred dollars. All right, Jack. No. <coughs> yes, right. I'm glad you're sitting near you. Yeah. Sorry. All right, Sam Rogers. That. Uh, so, a plan, obviously, we meet um, tomorrow, tomorrow evening with the building committee, but we'll give these all to Port City Architects for, for review. Yes? Can we get the alternate bid pricing on Blaine Casey, please? On the second page? Should be alternate one and alternate two? Yeah. The alternate one was to add 8,868. How much? 8,868. And that was an add? Yep. And alternate two is deduct $2,500. How much? $2,500. Thank you. So like Keith had mentioned, tomorrow night is the building committee meeting. So we'll go through those a little bit more. And then we'll give them to Port we'll City. And give them to Port City. Uh, I'm sure the point of contact will be Port City as we go through this process. Yeah. I appreciate you gentlemen coming tonight and providing us a bid. We really appreciate it. Thank you much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. All right, moving on. We've got furniture bids now to open. <coughs> that, that's a one furniture bid from one of the companies. <coughs> the other one, I think, is. Uh, we have yeah. two bids, this right. being one, this being one. That's right. right. I think that one there is a complete package for everybody on the board. Okay. Two bids, office resources and creative office pavilion. So the first being office resources. Form. Office resource uh, eighty one thousand one hundred thirty four dollars fifty three cents. Creative office looks like eighty three thousand one hundred thirty 
68 cents. This is also going to Port City? Yeah, we'll let them look at plus our uh, consultant for office stuff. Okay. Alternate, yeah, it looks like Creative Office Pavilion on their itemized bid sheet has alternate one to the right. It shows the reductions, even though they didn't tabulate it up, so it'll be something that we'll have to tabulate. Just for instance, it looks like the, the chairs for the, um, the 111 chairs we need for the meeting room, their bid price was 20743 and their alternate was 10447 oh, right. So that's half the money. So. They only got three legs. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to look at it. But again, that's something else that we will have to bear down and yeah. take a look at. Well, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff too that is significant. Takes care of the furniture bids. Solar <laughs> package discussion. Yeah, I. Um, I wanted to have this uh, discussion to bring you up to speed on my conversations with uh, council relative to this. Um, as you know, we received three solar proposals that came in. Out of the three proposals that were received, one proposal um, specifically provided to us uh, the kilowatt hours that we were looking for and the dual access tracker that we had required within the proposal. In addition to that, it was a local company who was also going to, in essence on paper, cut their cost to us in half for, for the uh, solar package. So what I did is I, I looked at that particular package and only that package initially because it met all the requirements that we had within the proposal. Um, the, there were alternative financing pieces in there that um, I had questions on, particularly of how we wanted to frame and put together a um, legal agreement between the, the municipality and, um, and themselves. I contacted our attorney who um, felt that she didn't have enough expertise to really look at it and asked uh, if she, if we didn't mind working with Bernstein Shore and Kevin Dickey, who attorney Dickey, I guess, has been dealing with a lot of these um, electrical uh, agreements. So I spoke to uh, Shauna uh, Cook and Kevin on the phone on Friday and they advised me that these are pretty much agreements that are, are generally accepted throughout the state of Maine. Um, ours is a little unique in that the length of the agreement that he's specifying, um, Kevin seemed to think that usually they're 20 years because of the payback, but this one is a seven year agreement. He felt that um, if we decided to, to move forward, that that wasn't a stumbling block and you have to put some protections within an agreement that 
um, for us to look at and, and decide on, uh, upon. The other thing that I was really concerned about, and I got my answer, was whether we needed approval through a town meeting vote, and both attorneys indicated to me, yes, you do. Um, our, our, our specific agreement to enter into purchasing or leasing agreements that the board has <coughs> control over only goes for five years. This would be a seven-year agreement. So in essence, at the very little, at least, that we will have to have a warrant article on a special town meeting or annual town meeting to seek approval to enter into whatever agreement that we have. So before I went any further, I, I think I got the answers that I needed. Um, I think what I'm looking for from you folks at this point is, is direction as to whether, whether my assessment that the proposal, only, and only one proposal, met the requirements that we sought, and whether or not you wanted me to continue going down, getting the proper paperwork that we can look at in order to agree to some sort of agreement with NAOTO to move forward with that solar package, providing we get approvals for it. So I guess in a nutshell, that's that's where I am at this point. Um, okay. You want to talk about the fact that this is the vote before the vote on the building, and that would have to have a yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know how we'd frame it. We, I, I don't know how we'd want to put it together. If we'd want to request the, the money in a special town meeting uh, as a standalone warrant article to discuss only that and provide the proviso there that it would be added on to a uh, bond package. And if the bond package doesn't get passed, then obviously the project doesn't go forward. So uh, Jack and I talked a little bit about that today. We thought that strategically, that'd probably be the best way to, to move forward, that we'd get maybe a... Um, that would escape clause. Yeah, basically. have an approval on that, and then, and, and then with the provisions that if the bond package doesn't move forward, then obviously the money that would be earmarked for this uh, would not be approved. You could do that on the same night, right? You could do it on the same night, yeah. yep. You could do it initially, and that would, I guess in a way, there's been some discussion of whether or not the municipality really wants to get into the solar energy business, and this certainly would give everybody the opportunity to weigh in on that prior to weighing in on the bond. Um, and obviously our bond request will have a complete package, and then if we decide, if the, if the town decides not to go forward with the solar, then we can reduce the amount for the bond at the meeting, we just can't raise it. So when we have to do the same thing for the um, for the furniture? Uh, no, we would add the furniture. If you guys approve the furniture package after some review, we'll just add it into the bond agreement, and we won't have to do it moving forward. The only reason here is that this is a unique thing that we're entering because into of the a agreement. agreement. Yeah, it's a lease. It's a lease. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why yeah. we have to do it. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. Um, and. You know, I, I'll take my direction from you folks as to how you think we should proceed. But I think, in a nutshell, I, I think only one met the requirements of the proposal. And in fact, it's probably a pretty good deal if we want to do solar. Um, and then we just have to work out the logistics legally that you review prior to we setting up any any vote on it. So you know, based on <coughs> comments that were made from the different vendors, when we, you know, we've got these quotes and the reply back from, you know, what, uh, Nyoto. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just, I dug into a little bit more into these trackers, you know. I, <coughs> the internet is so full of information, right? And, it, you know, if it's on the internet, it's true, so. Yeah. <laughs> However, the information that I dug into was pretty consistent pretty much stays, you know, all the same. And I contacted Steve Marquis from the RSU because I wanted to see what, my concern was these trackers, you know, it's a seven year thing, but what maintenance is involved in these trackers? You know, how much is that gonna cost? If, if we weren't getting any deals at all from Solom Place, these are proportionally much more expensive. You know, you don't get your money back from a tracker Depend, uh, compared to what they output, 
you know, it's just it, proportionally, it's so much more expensive. You don't, it, the payback is it, but because of the deal that we're getting, it kind of blows it out of the water, you know, and, and I think that's the right thing to do. My only concern was what's the cost on these things when it, when it comes to the, the trackers. And I haven't been able to find anything on, on what the cost is. And, and the RSU, they're like, what do they do with the tracker they have now? Steve can't find any money appropriated to, to, to maintain, maintain the tracker. Those. Yeah. So the only money that was that they've done is they've had to replace, uh, they got some damaged panels. They have replaced some panels a few years back. But he can't find, there's no line item anywhere that says this is how much they, they pay. And I just haven't had an opportunity to go and ask around for some more. So I, think I know on the panels we have a 25 year warranty. Right. Um, <clears throat> And it's something got damaged itself. over there, so right, that's, yeah. why, that's why you had to pay okay. that. I know Sean Houston has got two trackers at his location on 111. All on uh, up yeah. there. And the only thing he ever has to do to it is there's a grease fitting on it that you know, houses some sort of gear that rotates that. Yeah. It's the only thing he ever has to do to those trackers. How long has he had them, Jason? I want to say Sean's had them for at least right? five years, probably seven now. Okay. Is that a grease like this? I mean, that that easy? Or? Yeah, that's the only. He keeps that thing lubricated, and no. yeah. the snow slides off him. Right. Yeah, because when it snows, you got no maintenance on and they when they it comes to that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It's all a galvanized system. So, this was probably two years ago that I spoke with him about it. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I can ask him again. I know him pretty well, so. Okay. One of the keys to this, of course, will be the legal authority yeah. and the legal approval of, of whatever arrangement we have. Yeah, you know, right. Anything. So that when we do sell it to the public, we can say, look, we've done our homework and, and you know, this, is, this has been legally approved. I think that's the key. That's to essential. You know. Yeah. Here you go. If you cut the lease period back from seven years to five years, that alleviate any legal fees and getting a special contract going up? Um, I'm not quite sure if it would or not. I, You're still going to have to have counsel prepare the appropriate yeah. document well, regardless of town meeting because this, this is a right. simple. I don't think you want to go down that road. No, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think a town meeting is a, is a big issue. No. I mean, we're going to be presenting a package anyways, and I think this is just, if they're going to vote for the for the town and, and you know, we do our homework right and, and the deal that we're getting, you know, in the scheme of things. Yeah, $110,000 or something. Yeah, and, and, a, and a 2 .5, 2 .6, whatever, you know, you know, a 2.5, 2.6, whatever, $1,000 package, it's nothing. And I don't think that's really going to be a real big issue. The biggest reaction will be how they emotionally react as well. And whether or not that's a they were going to save them money in the long run. I know. That's, I mean, that's, that's the, right. Yeah. Right. That's the deal. We'll have yeah. we'll have virtually no electrical cost, and and because of the net metering, we may be able to benefit yeah. public works, fire, and <coughs> transfer station as a result of those trackers. Right. The only other the other thing that I think is key that maybe the committee needs to look at is, and maybe we get Nyoto in here. Where are we going to put these things? You know, I stopped by the site the other day and looked around and. And said, boy, you know, I think there's going to have to be a lot of clearing in order to make room. And I already put Roger on notice. You know, <laughs> and, and, and we want to make sure that we continue to have access to the rest of that property. So we don't want to put these things there and then block ourselves from having right. access down the right. road. So I, it, it's all doable. Yep. And these logistics will have to be ironed out. Yep. But I think my largest the fears that I had. They're not fears, really, but concerns that I had. And, uh, I think as long as we agree that this is the way we want to go and we have the proper documentation signed, filled out, that we can look at and agree to, uh, then we move it forward. So I think if I don't hear any objections, I'll go ahead to the next step and start working through council to, to get some documents in front of you to, to look at. Right, speaking, sure, sure. Be looking out for our researchers. I mean, that's yeah. right. I mean, that's that's what we we contracted him for. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. So right. if you get solar, you can get out there with your tractor and charge your battery. Mm. Yeah. Well, that means he's not bringing it back. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
It'll be simple for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with moving, moving forward. Yeah. I think there are some questions that we need to ask. Okay. Order a little bit, but yeah. All right. Anything else on the solar? No. Um, no. We've got some more bids to open. Public Works mid-sized truck bids. They, well, they've already been open. We opened them, but I think we want to have a discussion, um, and that's one of the reasons Roger's here for a couple of hours tonight, but one of them is the trucks. Um, not only the truck bids, we only received one, but the body bids, and I think he's got some information relative to both of them. Um, I think the other thing we talked about, and Roger and I haven't spoken today, but that, uh, v, that VW um, money is now available again in terms of purchasing even some mid-sized equipment and it may be worth our while to to consider going to a diesel mid-sized truck because of the benefit from the from the Volkswagen money if we can get the grant. Well you got something to keep you know Pat turn in. Yeah we got something we can turn in. Right, right. Yeah. We're grateful to get rid of it. I know we're right. glad to get rid of it. Am so, I looking at this right, that the newer truck is $4,000 cheaper than the That is correct. Truck? That's correct. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. You're, they're going from what, V10 to a V8 now? The difference in these two trucks is one is sitting in the, the doyette, but it doesn't have the provision to put a power takeoff hydraulic pump on the transmission. If anybody's looked under the hood of these things, it's really busy under their pumps. You'd have to put a clutch pump on that. That's not the end of the world. But it would fit the time frame better and everything if we ordered the truck. It's got a different engine. It's a V8 instead of a V10. Bill asks, we do have the option of applying for this grant, but I think that leaves us in the lurch with the Rumble Ford. You could do that because they're the only bidder. From what I understand, it's about nine thousand some odd dollars more for diesel than the gas. This Volkswagen basically BW will get caught sending oh false tests or yeah. providing false tests and we're fine big time. The feds have passed it down to the states administering the grants. You can repower or replace up to two of your vehicles if you get chosen. There is matching funds. It's an 80% match on this side. You have to come up with 20% of the funds. And they're good for it. So there's, there's guidelines to go by about what it what is and what is not eligible. There's about ten different things. I looked for fire, it's it's not in here. Right. So, and you can repower from ninety two to two thousand and nine full size trucks, class eight, which we have two of those. That this would fit quite nicely on. You would either got to replace it with an alt, a newer diesel that's cleaner, or an alternate fuel engine which could be compressed natural, uh, natural gas or electric. I don't know how long the extension code would have to be. <laughs> so, our cost would be what, 20%? 20%. That is to either repower an existing unit or replace it. What I don't know is if this is replacing cabin chassis or a complete unit. Complete prices on these things, this time on the truck bid, the equipment part of the bid is more than the actual truck. Usually it runs about 50-50. But uh, again, I don't know where that really leaves us on this particular truck. I can talk to a Rumble Ford where they are the only bidder and see that if you don't get the grant, then where do you go? I mean, do you wait? How long will they hold that 20 bid? Yeah, well, that's just it. Yeah. I don't know that. Okay. I've got to talk to. There's a new person there. He came over from uh, O'Connor. Guy knows what he's talking about. So I can do a little more info on that and see what? if that's a possibility. I was looking at it from a different angle and possibly either repowering or replacing. It would be more of a replacement. 
for those full-size trucks so than you, this particular one. Okay, so your thought is to, to move forward with what we have here and then look at yeah. this for one of our other trucks? Yeah, I, I was thinking that. I mean, do we have, uh, do we have, that's why I asked what the percentage Only because was. of the time frame. These things are going to be in by November 15th. I don't expect that this truck is going to plow snow this year anyway. Matter of fact, in the bid, I'm asking to split the bid. It doesn't even include a plow because, long story short, but the last time we bought a five, not the last time, the, the time before we bought a 550, put a plow set up on it and everything from a named company, Viking. And we ended up having a frame problem with the truck. Had a certified welder come in, welded it. And that didn't last. So he had an uncertified welder, welded it back together inflated it and it's holding together but I have an issue with the plow on it so there's an auction coming up at Beatrice mid mid October you probably know the date not a Keenan auction so I'd like to hold off on the plow and go see if there is anything the last time I went probably should have bid a little bit more but Phil was elbowing me not to go anymore <laughs> <laughs> He does that, doesn't he? Yeah, well, looking up for the taxes, and I went with a number in mind and didn't exceed that. And it went for more than that. So, But anyway, I think we ought to stick to this deal, be done with it, move forward with it, and look into repowering or replacing a couple of the full size trucks. At some point, if we get selected for this, we get to go up with some matching funds. But the window would be into the next budget year, at least, anyway. So. It's a fairly quick turnaround. So what do we have for expect. funds for this project? Uh, we have we have over a hundred thousand dollars in this project. Yeah. Well, we, we're not for fault for this. No. What were the specifications? Did we specify gas? Yes. We did. We did. Right. So did. that's you know, if all of a sudden now we decide to go diesel, somebody and somebody might say, right. hey, wait a minute. You know, well, the only one bids are on the Ford, so that's right. Really. I, I don't see that as an issue, but. I didn't get a chance to talk with Roger. I wish I had now because I agree with your strategy of, you know, let's go ahead and get through this mid-sized truck because we know we're going to need to replace the one that we're holding together with bubble gum now to get through another season. It's not quite that bad. But <laughs> it's not good. And that's going to plow another season. So. Right. So, Roger, if we were to able to get on the VW grant and, and pick a truck. We talking about what, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars cost to the town of Rundle or maybe a little bit less? It really depends on if they do eighty percent of the cabin chassis or eighty percent of a complete unit. Yeah. Cabin chassis for that size truck, you're looking at somewhere around seventy five to eighty grand. Yeah. Just cabin chassis. Might come in under that depending on what you actually come up with. But geared up, those trucks right now are 160 plus thousand bucks. So you're going to look into that and see whether we can, we've got time yep. to get a grant application in, look at it, and see. And you might get, I now get a thing. You might get one. Yeah. Who knows? I would expect there's going to be a lot of town jumping on us. Oh, sure. And if and if we get chosen, nothing says that we actually have to. Not at all. If if we you know we put right. stuff out and we look at it and say hey well, we just can't fit it in the budget right. and yeah. then we don't yeah. exactly that gives you a little time. This other thing, I mean, we can go that road if we choose because <clears throat> this truck it does not plow snow this month. The Ford is looking at at least 120 days for delivery time if they order it. The truck doesn't go into the whoever we choose to gear it up doesn't go into that line until it shows up. So, figure that out. They said there's six to eight weeks minimum. That's when the truck's sitting there in the door yet. That's when it goes in line. So you look at April, maybe, before this thing shows up. So we can buy the truck. We have to wait for the truck to show up. Then whatever and then send body it to company we deal with. Right. Then it gets sent to them, and then it sits on the line for yep. how many weeks until we get done. the stuff in. So the bubblegum truck will last through the winter. It'll get through the winter, one way to go. Does this completely drain capital for public works? Um, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. 
Yeah, you're not leery of that. I mean, going into plow season with zero funds and capital. We lose an engine or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> I don't foresee that. What's going on with the, the other truck there, the one that showed up with the blown motor or something? Is that... that is together and running. Huh. Doesn't have a gear on it yet. Our original plan was to take some of the gear off one of the full-size trucks that we have and put on that. Quite frankly, most of the gear on the 25-year-old truck is geek to hell. So some of it, yes, we can use. We rebodied that truck just a few years ago. That's a no-brainer. That body's going on this truck. Yeah. The rest of it, plow gear. So you're not planning on using that this winter either? Oh, that truck is bottom slow this one. That, not that one. Time-wise, it's just to completely strip a truck, put another one together. Too long. Yeah, we're going to get through the winter with a truck that is currently already in use. <clears throat> so what is your recommendation? That we go with the Ford bid uh, for two for the twenty vehicle. The, the truck bid is is pretty straightforward. It's forty thousand three hundred and forty four dollars and eighty cents. Obviously, it's a rumble Ford. It is a gas motor. I have mixed feelings about this. How big is this truck? Right? This is a five fifty or considered a class five truck. Up to nineteen thousand five hundred pounds towards the Ford. So which one of these doesn't have the PTO, the 2020? The one sitting in the door yard, which is the 44145, does not have that provision on the transmission. Okay. You'd have to put something under the, the hood. And that one's a V10, right? That's a V10. But the 2020 will come the way you order it with everything you need on Correct. it. Correct. But it will be a V8. It'll be a V8 gas motor. Diesel? Some of these, the reluctance we have is nine thousand dollars up front no, buys a lot of gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll look at it. Four, 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 we've got two of these five fifties that are diesel right now. Quite frankly, they spend half their life at a run before. For mostly emissions, one of them had some other issues, internal engine problems. Ford has had they're on their third diesel situation. I believe they've got it squared away, but so then for the body, for the longest time, I did my best to convert our fleet over to diesel. Now I see it going back the other way. We have a wax card system which you can get gas pretty much any way you need it. We get 4,000 gallons of diesel fuel sitting in the door yet. That's one of my problems. When, when the major storm comes in and there's no power anyway, you're going to have to get on a turnpike that has backup generator systems to pump gas. Why is that it's going this way too on a lot of stuff now? All these ambulances and stuff like that, they're coming gas. We're slowly learning that diesel really isn't designed to start and punch it and take off. And it just causes all kinds of problems. So, yeah, it's, it's coming, and pretty soon, it's not necessarily going to be an internal combustion engine. It's crazy. So anyway, package-wise, 43-44-80 for the truck. That's, again, that's an no-brainer, so you want to split your board on approving total package or vehicle first. I just want to tally up the total and see what it does to capital. That's before I vote on total. 104-834-80. So that's the HP Fairfield? Is not. It's not? It's not, because their body is a stainless steel body only, just the shell. The under cross members and long sills of that body are regular steel. To me, that doesn't make any sense. No. Because this body will not only be on this truck, but it'll be on its replacement. Yeah. We have one of these existing bodies, the same body that... Uh, Viking bid on. It looks as good as it did when we got it. It's eight years old already. When you, it's a side dump. So when you put the body up, put the side dump up. When you're washing these things, there's, there's no nooks and crannies, but it's all stainless steel. And again, this thing looks the same as it did when it showed up. I can show you a couple of steel bodies. We got 
He should have went to stainless, all stainless years ago. Didn't do it soon. Roger, what's the six thousand and ninety-five dollar option? Is that something there are, you recommend? The last time we put added fenders to all of these five fifties to keep all that crap and stuff that was spread off the frames, the axles, the brakes, and all that. Uh, the last one we did cost us six hundred and some odd dollars just for the pots, and we put them on. They were offered to do it for eight hundred and fifty bucks. It's basically these that would be rear poly fenders, and that keeps all that road stuff in that area and not spread all over the truck frame, the body, and everything. We've got them basically on every truck we get. So one hundred four eight thirty four eight. Yeah, and what's in what's in capital? One sixty two five. Somewhere in oh, there. so it doesn't drain it. Yeah. I'll double check the number and make sure. But I went through that last week. It's pretty accurate. So I mean, we'll have a minimum of fifty grand in capital. Yeah. The breakdown on this though, it's got to be that's the total package. But Rumble Ford's share, obviously, the forty grand. Vikings is 59,245, and that leaves 5,245 bucks for a plow. We can probably get one less than that somewhere, but not necessarily from Viking. The plow they're offering is the same plow that broke the frame on the other truck. I don't want to do this twice. <laughs> the Viking is actually 64 and some change, right? Not 59, 64,490 is what. If it's if you do the total package. Uh, but so Roger, what's your recommendation? Basically, we're all set with the truck, but when it comes to yeah. the to do the Viking, did with one option for the fenders, and leave fifty two hundred and forty five dollars in reserve to buy a plow from from somebody. It could be Fairfield, it could be Viking. They've got more than one style plow, but I am leery of the plow that they have bid on. Is that is the same exact plow that was on our other truck that broke the frame? Right. Right. We're at fifty-eight three ninety-five for the basic package, okay. and then what options are we looking at? Eight fifty for the fenders. Eight hundred and fifty dollars. Yep. So it's fifty-nine two forty-five. Ninety-nine, five, eighty-nine, eighty. Not the total package, no. But it doesn't leave me any money to buy a plow. You got to leave that fifty-two hundred. Round it off to five grand if you want. A plow from some vendor. It could very well be Viking, but it won't be that one. Right. That if, they we go, if we go forty thousand three forty-four eighty for the truck, and fifty-nine thousand. 245. 245, that leaves us 99,589.80, right? That's the number you got? Yep. Right. But it doesn't leave him any money to buy a plow. But that's the two options that we need, right? We need the truck, Correct. and we need the body with the front. Right. Yeah. And then he can go find a plow, and right. come back to us, and... Right. I don't even... Yeah. It, if it's less than 5,000, you won't have to... He doesn't have to come to us. Right. So I make a motion that we go with with the 2020 uh, Ford from Arundel um, at forty thousand three hundred forty-four eighty cents, and the Viking option uh, for uh, fifty-nine thousand two hundred forty-five, total of ninety-nine five hundred eighty-nine eighty. Did I get that right? Yeah. 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 So motion by Dan for the for the truck package. I'll second. Seconded by Tom. Any more discussion on the truck? All those in favor? Again, I can talk to a rumble forward and see if the styles and the movement line up. And yeah, let me just double check the, the total number in the capital reserve so I don't send you on a merry trip and I don't have enough money. And, but and I you're positive I do. And you're okay with the V eight? V eight, yeah. It's conventional. 
V8 engine, no dual overhead cam or anything. It's a push rod engine. Yeah. Sometimes you go, go back to the basics. And that's exactly what they're doing with this, from what I understand. I still have hot burn converting, converting the fleet back from diesel to gas. But it's only a fad. Everything we own is diesel. It will, if you watch. Roger, while we got you here, Brimstone, Lumber Road, Intersection. Um, uh, All right, call you're ready. Okay. Good morning, morning. Gary. Yep. Yeah, we put this on here for a variety of reasons. Well, I just got some information relative to <coughs> the neighbors of the property. But I specifically wanted to put it on because one of the ideas that we were coming up with, if you don't have enough money to, to uh, do a complete intersection renovation, but some of the ideas that are being thrown around the table were, how about if we try a pretty aggressive amount of signage to redefine what we want to have accomplished there and then get together with a sign package and see how that works out. Um, I think that's what we were thinking. Um, but I'll let Roger talk about you know, what you have for the... Uh, well, before anybody suggests that I talk to the DOT, I did that once and they completely redesigned the intersection exactly opposite of what we asked. Yeah. So let's not do it. Well, they put a sidewalk for you over here on the... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got a call into Mitchell's Electric who work on our traffic signals to check into the possibility and you've probably seen these solar setups around on stop sign help the country someplace with flashing lights in motion detect his own so that they won't stay on and lick in somebody's bedroom window all night long. So he's yet to get back to me on those. I think you would have to do something along those lines with advanced warning signs on both sides of this. Probably the same way. You know, stop. There's stop ahead signs now in place for Brimstone and Lumber Crew. So in place of the stop ahead signs, you would put on the brimstone road a flashing one that's stop ahead as well as the stop sign itself. You'd have to do something similar to that on the new road side of that intersection for advanced warning. You would really have to be aggressive as far as advertising this and also putting up message boards or something, whether we rent them or what, well in advance of just changing the sign and let it go because well, right now everybody is used to stopping there anyway. So eh, not so much. <laughs> well, I it's supposed to. <laughs> I would say that there, you know there's been stop signs there for many, 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 many years. What we don't have is any history of any bad accidents there, and I'd like to keep it that way. So whatever we do, yeah. I can't believe we have. That. It's amazing. It baffles me. <laughs> there's no history. Yeah. There's no real history there. No, I can't remember one. If you look at that right now, that is a cluster. It, it's a mess. The, the stuff that's happened illegally is it mostly on Limerick Road or from the Brimstone Road? It's people coming straight through on. Uh, it's it's both. Yeah. We were working there today, and even with our signs there, and a sheriff's deputy sitting there, it, it got interesting. So yeah. People are amazing. This other thing you got on the agenda. I mean, that's got advanced warning signs on both sides of it. It's out in the middle of a big opening. People can see this a mile away. If they're going to run that sign, I don't care what you've got. To. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the sheriff's the one that's going to fix that problem, not us. No matter what you've got. I did talk to one of the Labages, Dolores Clough, her name is. She apparently is in charge of this. And I don't know what's going on because they haven't contacted their attorney to talk about it. 
So there's a stumbling block someplace. I finally talked to her again the other day and said, hey, what's going on? You know, we'd like to do something. I talked to Cindy about it. She referred me to Dolores. One way or the other, we've got to either live on their property, no question, like 22 people. We've either got to restore that back to what would be original, or have it appraised, come up with a mutual price and agreement that they're willing to sell to the town as a form of taking. We could at least do one or the other, you know, bare minimum, before we do anything else. Here. It with the with the sign package, do we need that space for? Um, you wouldn't necessarily need that space. We would, but have, we would have to put up a sign, no left turns onto Limerick Road off of Brimstone. Right? Because there's no way they're going to be able to make that turn. Can they do it even Can right? Can they make it now, Phil? Could you make that turn? They could make that turn if you use the barge's property. Okay, yeah. If, you, if you close off the barge's property... They won't be able to make the left-hand turn. You won't make the left-hand turn, or you, cops could have to do a three-point turn. Oh, okay. Still illegal. Yeah. So the, so the property we are utilizing, is that that triangular piece right there? Is that what we're talking about? That's correct. So how long have we been driving over that? God only knows. I don't. As far back as I can remember. It's been a long time. There are other ways to acquire interest. <laughs> I know that. Absolutely. <laughs> and we may have. Uh, no yeah. man. Just by use. That's right. Yeah. Public easement. Yeah. And it's got to be. You know, 40 plus years? No longer than that because well, they, they were using that. it. How do you get longer than 40 plus? Oh, plus. <laughs> yeah. Let's try. Let's try 60 plus. Yeah. So, so just to try to to move this conversation on, and, um, I think it would behoove Roger and I to come up with some sort of sign package that we think may work there. He's going to get some cost on some of these solar signs that I think are a good idea. I think that's the only way that you're going to get away with it because you're seeing what. Yeah, I don't believe anybody that's running these signs in either location is the fact that they don't know that they are or don't see it. That's, that wouldn't sell. That doesn't pass the straight face test. And I think once we do that, then we can come back with a cost associated with the signs and then have you folks, because it's going to be some sort of variation in traffic control, obviously we should get your blessing. Yeah, do we, we want to move forward with an appraisal on that piece? In talking to a guy that does appraisal work for BH2M, they're in the same building, he said most of the time, and this is one of the cases, that his fee for this, which would be about a thousand bucks, would probably be more than the properties for us. He said, Do you understand this? And is that something you're willing to do? Mm. I said, I understand that, but we're on someone else's property. We either got to come to some agreement with them or put it back to somewhat where it should be. Or do nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'm with Tom on this. I mean, I, you know, it, I think. When they go to sell that, might be a wrinkle there. What's that? I said, I think when they go to sell this, there might be a wrinkle there. And that may cause them to come to us and say, we've got to figure something out. Because they're not responding to you now. Yeah. That's well, what she it's did take. finally tell me, if you want to get it appraised and move forward on this, go ahead. And then they'll talk to whomever, who, I guess they use an Amy from... They haven't contacted her. They haven't contacted her yet. They asked yeah. Okay. I think we just, I think we leave that alone until, until uh, they contact us in earnest that, you know, he's going to come up with a price. And then maybe at that point. Yeah, I don't know what the problem you, is, but obviously right now there's something going on yeah. internally there. Because you could, you could still do what we want to do here and just leave all that alone and don't yeah. touch it. You know, yeah. change the signage, change the stop signs, put all your, and then continue on. And don't okay. do a darn thing with that except stop, you know, no left-hand turn, keep the big trucks or whatever out from, from using that right. road. Yep. Buses are using it right now, so big trucks can turn in the short turn and the buses can. So. 
Yeah, we have an issue there too that we have to work on as well. So, I think I have some direction of where we need to go. I think I'm hearing the sign package is something that we should be looking at. So we'll work on that. Um, I think we need the, the value of the land. Uh, I guess I'm in, I'm in agreement with, let's leave that alone until they approach us with uh, some sort of cost they feel is associated with it. And then we'll just put our sign package accordingly. We'll, we'll have to talk to the school though because they do, from what I understand, they do turn vehicles there, buses there, but I'm not sure. They were today, but we were there as well, so maybe okay. it was just so busy there. Okay. All right. So we'll put something together and come back with it. Uh, another intersection, River Road, Old Post Road. Same situation. We can check into some of these reflective uh, flashing signals. But drive right down there and look at this. I mean, this. Uh, I advance can't. warning in all four directions and stop signs in a wide open yeah, area. Open. Yeah, yeah. No straight face to STO folks. Right. You, you can't say, I didn't see it. Yeah. I, I agree. If you did, you shouldn't be driving. I don't know how anybody make that mistake unless they purposely make that mistake and just decide they're not going to stop. Pretty sure there's a lot of that decision sure, going on. I'm sure there is too. <laughs> with with the sheriff's comments tonight that him and uh, Sheriff Woodcock are going to be working on it, that may be the the recipe to to approach. And I'll reiterate that tomorrow is to really have a good presence down there and see if we can put an end to. Uh, a few of those signs right. are in tough shape, so we got to do something there. Yeah, we can. I don't know what somebody did. Whether they get out with a pickaxe or what, but be a bunch of holes through one. Oh, really? It still shows up, still reflects real good. Let's get some holes in it. And it's not somebody took target practice on it. Looks like somebody just beat through it. And the little signs that say four way stop or a stop. Hold. Yeah, those, quite frankly, we haven't been using those in quite a while. No. You got a stop ahead sign 500 feet down the road yeah. and a 36 inch stop sign. I mean, the question usually is, well, who goes first? Well, who got there first? Yeah. A little common sense should be left somewhere. Right up front. Yeah. <laughs> well, courtesy, there isn't any of that left up there. I can tell you that. I pass through one in West Kennebunk every day, and it seems to work just fine. Uh, they do have a blinking red light there, uh, but there's a four-way stop, and everybody sort of just takes their time. You get Every now and then, you'll get somebody who wants to go before they're ready, but... Yeah, those stop signs are that big. Yeah, they're big stops all the way around them. Those are four foot yeah. signs. Yeah, those are big There was signs. some suggestion to put a flashing light there. I mean, you think if somebody's already made up their mind to blow that intersection, that's going to deter them? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I think that flashing light was already there in West Kennebunk when they put up the big. No, I think it was too. Yeah, when they yeah put but it was suggested for this. Yeah, I, no. I'm not in agreement with that. I no. It's just an added expense. I don't think that warrants yeah. it at this point. I don't believe we haven't had any major accidents there. Well, it was one last week. <laughs> Somebody ran a stop sign. Yeah. There have been quite a few fender benders there. Okay. Somebody will look like me. Yeah. Yeah. Flat <laughs> land all around it. <laughs> Trying to beat the other car. That's right exactly. Up. Or, or you stop at the stop sign and there's somebody else already stopped and then you take off and they take off and you meet in the middle of the road. All right, special town meeting. You got some more on the sign stuff? Just, I think, Velma, you had mentioned something yeah. about a, a one way. Yes. That would, that would probably just make that worse. I worse. Think. Making the little part of, of uh, yeah, I've heard I this still before. call it Route 1. You understand what that does a snow removal? Yeah. <laughs> it screws it up big time. Oh, because you, you'd you have to go down with one to come up. You'd have to make a loop if you want to go with the traffic. you got to go through that twice. And go all around and make the loop and come yeah. back. And we'll I put up signs like Portland does that snowmobile equipment operates opposite of traffic. Yeah. Just get a wider plow. Yeah. <laughs> a wider V plow. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on. Special town meeting order. Need some signatures? Yeah, the approval of it. Uh, it's in your packet. Yeah, looks like we'll have four articles. Um, one is by petition. Article three is by petition. Uh, 
Um, article two is the um, is the uh, modification to the street the design and construction standards. Discussion trips on the on state maintained roads, and then the uh, last one is the local option exemption for residents um, who are permanently stationed and employed for military service outside the state. So for Article 3, we had this discussion a while back about um, a public hearing. They're having one Thursday night. They are, okay. Yep. Planning yep. board's having yep. one Thursday night. Yep. They'll have it Thursday. Okay. All right, looking for a motion. Make a motion that we hold the uh, special town meeting for Monday, September 23rd. I'll second okay. that. Four articles. Four articles. Yep. Right, motion by Dan, seconded by Velma. All those in favor? You got to sign anything, Keith? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. That's what I'm here for. Keep me awake tonight. Break the news to everybody, but we're getting ready to go into an executive session. Uh, you guys can wait in the hallway and come back in after. Oh, yeah, so we can hear you adjourn. <laughs> what's, the, um, <laughs> what's the discussion? Um, employee wages. I make a motion Roger, that we're going to executive yeah, session and for M MRSA 405 <laughs> yeah, as custom for employee wages. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know.